Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle. And we're, and we're the, the Board, board Game, Game Tutors. Tutors. Today, we're going to be doing our advanced concepts video for the card game Good Cop, Bad Cop, and specifically going over all of the equipment cards in the game. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So here we have our four-player game set up. We've shown you in previous videos how to set up a four-player game and how the mechanics of the game work. Now we're just going to go over the specific equipment cards and talk about how each of them in particular works in the game. So um, just for clarification's sake, we are crooked. Two crookeds, one honest. We are crooked. The crooked is here, the crooked is here, and then the middle card is the honest card. So obviously you want to keep track of what you are at the beginning of the game, like we always do. This is Sam, this is John, and this is Michelle. So I guess you would say we are Ariel in this game. <laughs> All right. And so the equipment cards can be played at any time. It doesn't have to be your turn and it doesn't count as your action unless the card says otherwise. So that's why we're going to go over the specific cards and we'll talk to you about if there are any restrictions on when you can play them. But normally you can play it any time and it doesn't have to be your turn. Yeah. So if, it, um, if this card was uh, with Michelle, um, I could play my equipment card usually but not always, because like we said, there are limitations on several of the cards. Um, I could interrupt her turn. I could interrupt Michelle's turn. I could interrupt Sam's turn. I could interrupt John's turn. So uh, we're just going to put this aside right here for right now. Okay. So the first card that we're going to talk about is called, is called Wiretap. And it says investigate any two players. So we remember from all the basic actions that investigate means look at one of the cards that belongs to that player. And so this lets you investigate any two players at any time. It doesn't have to be your turn. So yeah, you would pick up that one and see, okay, one of that person's cards is crooked. Then you would choose someone else and check one of their cards. Okay, that one also is crooked. And obviously you keep this information to yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can say whatever you want to say. You could say, I didn't know you were crooked or whatever, but that's not that helpful because it's only one third of what they are. So, but basically this is helpful because it basically gives you the investigate action on this card twice. Uh, and you could even, uh, on a turn that you, uh, if this was your turn and you played wiretap first before you took your action, you could investigate three people. Or, um, it doesn't matter, uh, this has any two players, so you can't look at this card and this card. Uh, that doesn't work. You have to pick one card from one person, one card from another person. Mm -hmm. And then if it was your turn, you might be investigating one card um, as your action for your turn. So if you put it all together, that could be three at once. Right. So, for example, uh, we looked using wiretap, and then you discard wiretap at the bottom of the equipment card deck. Um but you, uh, I looked at this, I saw crooked, I looked at this and saw crooked, so I can use investigate, and I could look at this card too, um, or I could look at one of John's cards, etc. All right, yeah. so Any that's combination wiretap. could work. Huh? Okay, then we have flashbang. Shuffle all of your integrity cards, look at them, and place them face down on the table in any order. So this kind of lets you reset, because normally once you've put your cards down and the game starts, you can't change the order. But this card allows you, allows you to do that, and you get to look at them so that you know what you're, you know how you're putting them back down. It doesn't just cause chaos or anything like that. But it lets you conceal from, from the other players um, where your cards are. So like maybe they've seen one of your cards. Maybe some people have seen one of your cards, and they found out that card was crooked. But now you reshuffle them and put them back down. So then now they don't know where the card is that they already saw. So they kind of have to start over with checking which cards you have. So uh, now the honest is on the corner. The two crookeds are on the side. So if I use flashbang, that's one way you could use it. Obviously, if you were the agent or the kingpin, you'd want to do this especially so people could uh, not know that you were the agent of the kingpin. Yeah, so it makes them kind of have to start over with trying to figure out what all your cards are since they don't know, they wouldn't know any cards that they had seen where those cards are now. So wiretap, like we said, it's a good beginning game card because you get to look at two people's cards. Obviously, if everybody's cards are flipped over, wiretap's kind of useless. But that doesn't have to, uh, wiretap can be used at any point. Flashbang can be used at any point as well. Mm-hmm. Then we have Report Audit. Each player who has no face-up integrity cards must choose one integrity card to turn face-up. So this is another way of getting information more quickly than you normally would otherwise. 
it basically makes it so that suddenly everyone has to have at least one face up card. So if they if they already have turned one of their cards over, like say they got a gun and turned a card over, then they don't have to do this. But anyone who hasn't turned over any has to turn a card over. So then you're going to look around and see at least one card turned over in front of everyone. So if uh, Sam knew I looked at his card already, he would flip this one over because he knows I know that information already. And then John, he goes, I don't know, he flips this one over. So everybody who doesn't have a flipped over card has to flip one over. So this card... Um, it's timing because obviously you need to play it at a point where it'll actually work. If everybody has at least one card flipped over, this card is useless. And right. yeah. Also, a neat little fact. Uh, there are little Greek characters on the top of this uh, piece of paper right here that actually say in Greek letters, police report, in case you didn't know what that meant. I can't read any of the rest of the writing because it's really minuscule, but it says police report in Greek for some reason. Yeah, we're curious why that is. Okay, then the next uh, equipment card is Polygraph. Choose a player and view all of their integrity cards, then show them all of your integrity cards. So that, that, this one's pretty straightforward. You just basically exchange, no, well, not exchange, but exchange views of your cards with someone else. So you're going to find out everything about who they are, but they're also going to find out everything about who you are. So you kind of have to think about whether you think it's valuable to reveal your identity to this person in order to find out what their identity is. For example, this would be a good card to use if you determine who the kingpin is or who the agent is, and you know from your cards, oh, that's my boss. I want to show my boss what I am so that way they know I'm, right. honest, I'm, I'm on their side. So for example... Um, like I said, I am crooked. So um, whenever you show your cards, you still have to keep them in the same slots. So the crooked would have to stay here. The honest would have to stay here. But I let's say um, I showed my cards to Michelle um, because, uh, okay, so I showed my cards to Michelle. So no one else gets to see this, but I could see she has another crooked. So she would be de facto crooked if she doesn't have the agent card. And then we flip this one over. Oh, look, she's the kingpin. So uh, this would be a good way to show the kingpin, hey, I'm on your side, without saying anything. Right. Although, if you make funny faces at each other, then the other team probably will figure out that you are on the same team together. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't want to be too suspicious uh, when you do polygraph together. So, all right. Well, then, obviously, uh, I showed Michelle all mine. She showed me all hers. And they always have to go back to where they were originally. Mm-hmm. Then we have evidence bag. Choose a player and take that player's equipment card. So with this one, you're kind of gambling because most likely, in the, unless the person accidentally told you what their equipment card is, you probably don't know what they have. But it lets you take it away from them, especially if you suspect that it's maybe a really profitable one and you don't want them to have it. Then it lets you just take their equipment card. And then once you take it, you'll find out what it is. And anytime that you have two equipment cards um you do have to choose between them which one to keep but in this case you'd be playing this card so that wouldn't be an issue you just you you'd be getting rid of this card and taking the other player's card in place of it pretty much so one more thing polygraph that is played anytime evidence bag is played anytime so for example let's we didn't know michelle had polygraph for example uh, maybe she had a better card um if anyone acts suspicious and is really cagey and holds on to their equipment card for as long as they possibly can, you can probably assume it's a pretty good equipment card. So that might be a good time to use evidence bag to steal their equipment card from them. So if I played evidence bag this turn, I'd take evidence bag, put it underneath the deck that's in the middle of the table. Obviously the deck's over here right now because we're showing all of it. But I'm going to take hers and then I look at it. Okay, so I know she has polygraph. Um, so obviously Michelle and I both know what her card is so obviously you have to deal with that amount of knowledge uh they know what you have so yeah yeah and so you just you just discard the evidence bag you put it on the bottom of the equipment deck and then you keep the card that you just stole mm -hmm. all right next card Okay, this is Truth Serum. Choose a player. That player chooses one of their face down integrity cards to turn face up. So pretty simple. The player that you choose gets to choose on their own which card to turn over. So still, like if they're the kingpin, as long as they have another card that's still available to turn over, they don't have to reveal their kingpin card. They get to choose which card they want to reveal. 
But if they had two showing and only their kingpin was face down, for example, um, then they would have to turn it over because they have to turn something over. So, uh, for example, actually, not that example. Let's do this example. So in this example, uh, if no one else knew what I was, uh, they would think I'm basically on either side because I'm one third honest, one third crooked. This determines what I actually am. So somebody could play tr Michelle could play truth serum on me, Ariel, and then I wouldn't have a choice. Now I have to show what I am. Right. And so in that case, I'd have to show it. Okay, I am crooked. So the best time to play this is when one person only has one card left. Obviously, if you're a crooked cop and the kingpin, for example, uh, had this combination right here. Uh, you don't want to use truth serum on your own kingpin because that would not be cool if not everyone knows who he is. Um, they know that this person's crooked, though, because obviously two crookeds makes them that unless they're the agent. So you never know until you know the third card. Mm -hmm. So that's truth serum. Okay, then we have metal detector. Investigate each player who is holding a gun. So like, like we've already gone over, investigate means look at one of their integrity cards. So in this case, as many players as are holding a gun, you get to check um, one of their cards for each of those players. So let's say Sam is armed and pointing at Michelle. I am armed and I'm pointing at John. Okay, well, I do that. I do this. And now... Michelle plays Metal Detector. Now she gets to see one of, one of my integrity cards and one of Sam's integrity cards. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Then Blackmail. This is one of the uh, really fun cards of the deck. So choose two integrity cards held by other players. Those players exchange those two integrity cards. So this, this specifically applies to two other players. You can't involve your own cards in this action. And you basically take a card from one player and switch it with a card from another player. So you probably will want to switch cards that you've already had a chance to see so that you know exactly or have the best guess you can of what's actually happening when you switch them. Mm -hmm. As, so, of course, you're trying to get someone on your team. You don't want to accidentally remove someone from your team if you can help it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, if some... Uh, yeah. Uh, you definitely, unless you're really, really desperate, you don't want to play blackmail on cards that you haven't seen, just like Michelle said. So, for example, let's say everybody knew I was honest, crooked, crooked. So, uh, what they would do would be, uh, they would say, okay, um, let's say, okay, um, Sam, for example, let's say it was his turn. He played blackmail on me. He could grab this honest card from John and ex exchange it for this crooked card or this crooked card doesn't really matter uh, to turn the balance. I'm not crooked anymore. I am honest. Obviously he's taking a risk here because he doesn't know what John's two other cards are. He might be turning John by accident into something he doesn't want him to be. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, you just don't know. Uh, and also I forgot again, uh, truth serum, metal detector, and blackmail can be played at any time. But obviously, for blackmail, you really want to know what you're exchanging because otherwise it's pretty reckless. You don't know what you're doing when you exchange two cards that oh, are just switched. For example, let's see, I think, yeah, in this example, Sam is the agent over here, as you can tell. So if for some reason, let's say I use the blackmail card and I exchange this kingpin card for one of Sam's other cards. And basically, if you exchange a card that's that's not flipped over, it stays in that position, even if it exchanges people. And let's say the kingpin card got exchanged to Sam. Then the game would automatically be over, because as you can see, the agent and the kingpin belong to the same person. That is basically a logical conundrum everybody wants to kill and save the same person <laughs> so the game would end at this point because yeah like i said it's a logical inconsistency it just doesn't work and that person would automatically win by themselves i think yeah <laughs> because they did a awfully mastermind sort of move where uh, they are the agent and the kingpin <laughs> so that doesn't make perfect sense and that's why the game would end at that point it's not going to happen very often uh somebody would have to do something rather strange and not understand completely what they were doing 
to accidentally do that sort of thing. All right. Next one. Next one is planted evidence. Choose a player. For the rest of the game, all of that player's crooked cards are treated as honest cards, and all of their honest cards are treated as crooked cards. So this basically reverses what the person is, unless they're the agent or the kingpin, and then it doesn't really matter what their other cards say. So, for example, let's say, so we know now, in this example, a four-player example, Sam is the agent. He could play planted evidence on me. Ironically, it's not very thematic. Uh, it works better the other direction. But Sam could play planted evidence on me. Uh, planted good evidence, I guess you would say. <laughs> um, and he would turn my crooked cards into honest for the rest of the game. And honest cards into crooked cards. Therefore, tipping the balance of me, of my cards in such a way that I am, I am actually honest. Uh, the crooked <laughs> cards are essentially my honest cards now. So, uh, obviously, uh, one way in which this could all be fouled up, because, uh, like we said, planted evidence, it can happen at any time. If somebody, however, used the blackmail card, uh, so like, oh, let's say, Michelle, uh, Michelle, in this example, she's the kingpin, maybe after Sam played planted evidence on me, she played a blackmail card, and then gave me a second honest card, that would turn thereby turn me into a crooked cop again. <laughs> because of the cards being the opposite of what they say they are when they're in front of him. So as you can see, these equipment cards, they can stack in rather confusing and crazy ways. Like all of a sudden, like, like I'm good, I'm bad, I'm good, I'm bad, I don't know what I am. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Basically, that is planted evidence for you. So a lot of the excitement of the game comes in using the equipment cards and kind of changing what's going on. And somebody could think, wow, I'm going to win. Whoa, wait, what just happened? Everybody's against me now. Right. Okay, so then we have coffee. After the current turn ends, play moves immediately to your turn. So I could play this card at any time. And, for example, I could play it during my own turn. And then after the current turn ends, it would be my turn again immediately. Basically, our speculation as to what coffee actually means uh, practically would be, so if I played, uh, if I have this lead investigator card in my hand, and before I do anything else, because it says after the current turn ends, I could say, I'm, I'm playing my coffee card. So what essentially happens is, um, uh, Sam is skipped, John is skipped, Michelle is skipped, and then play immediately passes back to me. So I can do one action, uh, I play my coffee card, and then I can do a second action again. So it basically, I gave everybody else coffee, and it comes back to me. Like you distracted them by giving them coffee or something. And once I take my second action, uh, that's like one example, then uh, play would immediately pass back to Sam. So that's that. And, yeah, so basically yeah. What, what coffee does is it skips all the other players to get to you. So w whether it was just your turn or you played this on someone else's turn, it just skips whoever else would have gone before your turn and goes to you. Yeah. And then so, play continues as normal. So for example, if John had the card, then uh, if I played coffee sometime during his turn, it would skip Michelle's turn. It wouldn't pass to her. It would go immediately to me. And then it would continue clockwise in normal fashion. So back to Sam, back to John, etc. And when someone plays coffee, this is a good example of why we think you should make sure to keep the lead investigator investigator card in front of the person whose turn it is. Because then it makes it really clear whose turn it is, whose turn the current turn is, um, so that you can understand what's happening with coffee. That After that person's turn ends, the play will go to the person who played coffee. Right. So this is uh, one of the equipment cards where... Yeah, the lead investigator card staying in front of the person who is currently taking their turn. This is important to note with coffee. All right. Mm -hmm. Then we have surveillance camera. Use immediately after a player is investigated. That player must turn the integrity card that was viewed face up on the table. Okay, so this is one of the cards, one of the equipment cards that happens at a specific time in the game. So it says to use it after a player is investigated. So when someone else flips over their card, or secretively flips over their card and looks at it, normally only the person looking at it would find out what the card is. But you could play a surveillance camera while 
um, that other person is looking, is investigating a card. And then the person whose card was just investigated has to turn it over, leave it face up on the table. Yeah. So for example, you could use it after you investigate. So let's say, oh, um, this is a better example, actually. I, I'm crooked right now. I see, oh, this is the agent. So I could, if I had surveillance ca camera in my possession as my one equipment card, I would say, I'm playing a surveillance camera, the barrier card. Everyone knows she is the, uh, Sam is the agent. Right. I say she is the agent because it, it is a woman, but um, I don't know how people don't know that the agent is a woman because everybody else is a man in the police <laughs> station. So I'm not sure. Anyway, so um, I could use that to make the agent reveal who she is or... For example, let's say Michelle was investigating that card. I could say, wait, play surveillance I'm playing surveillance camera, so I'm kind of interrupting her turn, but the card that uh, she is looking at now is revealed, and it's the agent. Mm -hmm. So for, obviously, for the bad guys, if you can use that to reveal the agent, that's good. If you, For the good guys, if you can use that to reveal the kingpin, that's also good. Mm-hmm. Okay, then we have Smoke Grenade. Pretty straightforward. The turn order is reversed at the end of the current player's turn. So again, you just have to be clear on whose turn it currently is, and then someone plays this card, the play becomes reversed. So, for example, if it was my turn, Ariel's turn, uh, and then someone played uh, Smoke Grenade, then it would no longer pass clockwise, it would pass counterclockwise for the remainder of the game. Yeah, so he would finish his turn and then... And then um, so we would go, yeah, I would go next. We would go counterclockwise. Then John, then Sam, etc. So, uh, yeah, the turn order is reversed at the end of the current player's turn. So, another important card, just like with coffee, that uh, whoever has a lead investigator card holds on to the lead investigator card until they're done with their turn, then they pass it. So, that is really important for those two cards, uh, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just helps be clear about whose turn it is, like whether they've passed it on to the next person or they're still taking their turn. And obviously, um, you can kind of make house rules in terms of some of these things uh, that are happening. Um, if someone's being really stubborn and is arguing over the rules, uh, uh, our best recommendation uh, that we've learned from other people is to basically uh, choose uh, the ruling of that particular card uh, that benefits the player who's complaining the least so um if that ha if it happens that someone's arguing and says no i don't agree with that or whatever like yeah <laughs> of course why would you be playing with someone who really doesn't want to play fairly yeah he's going to be obnoxious <laughs> so all right so card. then we have defibrillator which is one of the really exciting cards revive a player who was eliminated choose and discard two of their integrity cards their role is determined by one integrity card for the rest of the game so the person who plays Defibrillator to bring back a player who was eliminated gets to choose of the three which card they're going to use. That means you get to choose, are they honest? And you'd probably do that if you're on the honest side. Um, or are they crooked? And you'd want to do that if you were crooked. So you get to not only bring them back to life, but determine pretty pretty firmly which side they're going to be on. Although there are other things that can mess it up, like someone else could play planted evidence, and then it, the card might become the opposite of what you chose. So, obviously, this is a time-specific card. This can never be used on an agent or a kingpin. So, you can't bring an agent or a kingpin back from the dead. Uh, if they're shot once, you can't use a defibrillator to remove a wound. Um, this only works on regular police officers. So, in this example, as you can see, I am dead. Uh, my mm -hmm. cards are turned sideways whenever I am killed. And I leave my cards like so. And anybody who is dead... They are dead. Uh, you keep skipping their turn. So in this particular rotation, it would be Michelle, Sam, John, Michelle, Sam, John. Sorry, my mouth wasn't cooperating there. And uh, so, obviously, if the agent, Sam, wanted to bring me back to life, he would remove, definitely, these two crooked cards and make me an honest cop. And therefore, I am back to life as an honest cop. Or, if my good old kingpin, Michelle wanted to bring me back to life, then she would remove the honest card and the crooked card, and then I am crooked, I am back in the action as her head henchman, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, that's what a defibrillator can do, and like Michelle said, you can use other cards to mess that up. So somebody can use planted evidence, and, oh, I'm not really crooked anymore, I am just 
honest. Well, I'm not really honest, I am just crooked, depending upon what is partic in particular is happening to me at a given time. Right. And the reason you can never use defibrillator on an agent or a kingpin is once one of them is killed, the game's over, so you can't play any more cards. And yeah. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. How would you use a defibrillator to remove a wound off of an agent or a kingpin? Right, yeah. So you also can't use it if they haven't actually been eliminated. Right. All right. Okay, then we have taser. This one is very specific because it actually says use only on your turn. So it says steal a gun from any player. Use only on your turn. This counts as your action for the turn. So this is the, I think, the only one exception mm -hmm. where this does actually count as your action. Normally, equipment cards do not count as your action. Mm -hmm. So... On a turn that you would use taser, you skip any of these things. Uh, it is essentially arming yourself by stealing from somebody else their gun. Right. So if, for example, let's say Sam had a gun and he pointed it at uh, Michelle, the kingpin, uh, then I would use the taser when this card came to me. Uh, I essentially use the arm ability and take this gun away from Sam, because I know he's trying to shoot my kingpin. <laughs> and then I can do action, uh, the second thing that I can do, which would be take aim. And who am I going to point at? I'm pointing at Sam. <laughs> so that would be that. And that's how you use taser. And yeah, uh, you can't use it on anybody else's turn, only mm -hmm. your turn. All right. So this is the last card right here. Another really good one. Restraining order. Use when a player shoots their gun. They must choose a different player and immediately aim at and shoot that player instead. So, restraining order. I'm oh, sorry, I'm Michelle, go ahead. So, you basically interrupt the person's turn when they're, they say, like, okay, I'm shooting this person. And then you're like, wait, no, you can't. Choose a different player and aim and shoot at that person. So, obviously, it's especially fun when if you can use this right before the agent gets killed or right before the kingpin gets killed and then prevent the game from ending at that point. Oh, sorry. That's the last card. Okay. I thought it was the last card. <laughs> um, so, restraining order. If Sam had the restraining order card, okay, so the play passes to Sam, then to John, then Michelle, then to me. I'm going to go boom. And right as I'm about to say boom, he says, stop. I have a piece of paper that says you can't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Not terribly thematic, but it's funny. <laughs> and so, uh, stop, you can't shoot me. So, who am I going to shoot? So, um, obviously, this is expertly played if, let's say, John got eliminated from the game. So, pretend he's not there anymore and his cards are turned sideways. If you play Restraining Order in a three player, uh, there's only three players left in the game. When I say boom, he says, stop, you have to shoot someone else. Guess who I have to shoot? My kingpin, <laughs> because that's the only option left. So uh, uh, this that's an expert play right there, if you can engineer that. Uh, doesn't happen often, but if you can, it feels very satisfying, and especially if that's the killing blow. Oh, uh, that, that's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's say, for example, uh, let's say John was eliminated and I was eliminated, and uh, Michelle had a gun. She was pointing it at, at Sam. And about to shoot him, he says, no, I, you can't shoot me. Uh, restraining order actually does nothing when there are only two players left in the game. So uh, this means nothing. Michelle would still shoot Sam. Right, because I can't choose anyone else to shoot if no one else is left in the game. So basically, you don't want to save your equipment card until this point cause if, if you have restraining order because it's not going to be useful anymore. Right. And uh, we got that clarification uh, directly from the FAQ. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's restraining order. It's only mainly useful when there's enough people alive for it to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, so I think this is actually the last equipment card. Canine unit. Choose a player. If they are holding a gun, they drop it. If it is currently that player's turn, they cannot pick up a gun on this turn. Or this turn. So this is another really cool one. You can just basically stop a person who was about to use their gun from using it. And it doesn't have to be on that player's turn when you use it, but it's especially beneficial to play this during the turn of the person who you're making drop the gun because then they're not allowed to pick up a gun as their action. They have to do something else. So, for example, um, Michelle still has the gun. This card passes to her. She's pointing it at Sam, and she's going to shoot him. If Sam plays the canine unit, however, while it is her turn, then she drops the gun. He goes to the middle of the table. And she cannot use the arm action this turn. So 
if you use the canine unit and you time it just right, as you can see here, um, you cannot arm, you cannot shoot, obviously, because both of those were disabled. Um, all you can do is investigate or equip or use your equipment card, basically. So um, you really limit people's actions if you play the canine unit when it is their turn to shoot somebody. Right. So you can use this canine unit to defend yourself. You can use this canine unit to defend your kingpin or your agent if you are their uh, henchman, I henchman guess. worker, whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that. Uh, and basically, at that point, so Michelle loses her gun. All she can do is investigate or equip for her basic action. And um, also, uh, for example, let's say um, Michelle uh, had one equipment card over here. Let's say she had one equipment card. She could use that equipment card first because equipment cards don't count as actions, uh, if you remember, at the beginning of the video. And then she could use equip again and then draw a second equipment card. On that same turn so uh, that is an option but obviously it has to be the right kind of equipment card to play mm -hmm. so that's that and all i right. believe those are all the cards yes they yes are. <laughs> so those are all the equipment cards that can come up there's just one copy of each um in the deck so we just showed you all the cards that are in the equipment card deck and yeah uh, when you're playing the game keep in mind uh some of the cards uh can be played at any time uh, obviously uh, you don't want to play some of them during certain instances because then they'll be useless. But um, other cards, they are specific. You can only play them at uh, very specific times. For example, for Taser, it has to be on your turn. And uh, that's the only really, really limiting one. But yeah, you have to keep it, uh, pay attention to all those different limitations. All right, so that's our advanced concepts video covering all of the equipment cards in Good Cop, Bad Cop. We hope you enjoyed this video and let us know if you have any questions or comments, clarifications. And yeah, if you enjoyed what you saw and would like to see more of our videos, please subscribe. We'll be updating our channel, our YouTube channel regularly. Mm -hmm. And thanks so much for watching. And yeah, please give us a like if you like this content. All right, thanks. We'll see you in the next video. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye.